Good evening, everybody from Berlin, and good afternoon to Evanston. That's where you are, Gail, right? Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. We're really excited to see you. Tim and I. Hi, handsome Tim. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Tim, I think I can speak for us both. We are huge Gail Williams fans, right? Yes. I think probably top fans. Top fans. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> <laughs> it's really true. Last time we saw you, Gail, together, actually, it probably was the last time I saw you, was, um, was it was freezing cold. Poor handsome Tim had to, yeah, you weren't used to those temperatures, were you? But we I'd came never to... seen snow before, pretty much, so it was... That's right. Oh, sweet. You did, I remember you lying down in front of the Bean and School of Music and doing a, a snowflake. No, an yes. angel. What do they yeah, call yeah, that's it? Right. <laughs> yeah, that snow is so weird, I tell you. It's nice and warm over here in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> but we were there and you were playing the Brahms horn trio and I remember just we just showed up we we're like Gail should we just live stream it and you were like sure and I just thought I want to be like her <laughs> you were so cool about it well it was fun for my students because they were all skipping cl classes you know <laughs> that's right they were all watching live weren't they in the in the in the room, <laughs> in the room. Gail, thank you so much for coming on today. I mean, we've been we've been holding the fort, Stefan and I, for it seems like weeks, um, meeting everywhere every night, and then having our party last Friday, which was just fantastic. And it, Tim and I really thought we'd just love to have you back um, and and talk about some of the things which you know you you inspire us so much with. Um, there are so many people watching, masses of fans, and they're all drinking different things. I asked them to tell us what they're drinking: um, Croatian water, fresh pressed orange juice tea, all sorts of things from all over the place. Coffee, uh, Darjeeling, uh, ginger beer. Not bad, huh? It's quite, uh, what are you drinking? Anything? Uh, I just had a grippy large glass of water. Uh, water. So cool. cool. Mint tea today. Stefan Dor accused me of putting red wine in a horn hangout cup. It is not. It's uh, mint tea. Tim, how about you? I actually haven't had my morning coffee yet. So that's oh, going to happen oh. very, very oh, that's bad. I feel like I'm doing really well for, <laughs> okay, well, for just, no coffee so far. Why don't, why don't you uh, leave the room and go make some coffee? Because I know what you get like when you don't have your coffee. That's a really good idea. Look, I'll, I'll be right back. <laughs> Gail, um, how are you doing with all the, how are you doing over there? How are you, how are you surviving? How are your, all your students? Well, Northwestern is a quarter system school. So when this all came down and all the shutdown, we were during uh, finals week, so most students went home, not knowing if they were going to be coming back. Um, we were going to be given, which we are right now, in our second week of spring break, which we never get. And on Monday, we start uh, teaching online. And are you all set up? I think I'm getting there. I had a meeting last night with all my students, making sure the the microphone levels good and what headphones I'm going to use and, <laughs> and we'll just you know go with the flow and see what we can do. I've, I've assigned a few things, so I might you know use that as a format and and um, in both class and in uh, individual lessons. What what Making do you think? What, what do you think will work? online and what do you think won't work online? I don't think the sound is going to be the ideal sound. Mm -hmm. I think you can tell intonation and rhythm and things like that. But I'm, I'm a, they call me the posture police person at school. Get your feet <laughs> underneath. Yeah. Tell us, like tell us your rules. I remember watching you teach and I remember thinking, Wow. And it's so important. This is something I, I tell all my students and all my, you know, festival at the Pacific Music Festival, whatever. They get really a hard time for me about their posture. That's why I love. What are your do's and don'ts of posture? Well, I think you, that's where you get you, your strength. You get your resonance. And if you're collapsed, you don't get the right kind of air in. And there's going to be some kind of tension if you're collapsed somewhere in your body and i think that is one of the most important things if you watch a child run they they or sit they have like perfect posture and then we grow up and we screw it all up <laughs> water I think, do you i think the horns are actually worse than a lot of people because when you first start playing horn you very likely are too small mm. yeah. and then as you grow some people still don't and i don't want to offend anybody but 
I am so short. I cannot play on the knee because the mm. mouthpiece ends up here. <laughs> and vice versa, if you're very tall, that you you collapse your body to get to the horn. And I think the worst thing you can do is to bring yourself to the horn. I think you have to bring the horn to you. Yeah, I'm not. I know there are some great players that do play on the leg. Um, I I can't can't play on the leg. I mean, it, I I I would be like that, like like yeah. like you said. And also for me, it's important to free up the sound. Stefan and I were talking about that the other night. Really important to have that space here, where the, so the sound can go somewhere. Um, and uh, yeah, I have a, a friend in the Vienna Philharmonic, Wolfgang Vlader. He's the third horn there. And Vienna horns are just like sort of paper mache horns. They're really light. They they sound amazing, but they're really light, and they play on the leg. So basically, they have never have any right to have any back pain. <laughs> but uh, but but how do you? Can you do that online? Do you think? Can you get at your students for their posture? Do they sit? Do they stand? Both. They both will be doing. Uh, that, it's, that's going to be hard because I usually sit so I can see them this way and they're playing, you know, so I can look at them at a, a 90 degree angle instead of yeah. just sitting parallel. Um, Mark, the questions are coming in. Okay. Breathe. Yeah. Breathing is the other thing. We're going to, we're going to, that is what, that, that's, I've learned so much from you and your, your, we did, we've done a great hangout about that buzzing and blowing, but I think we could, it was quite a while ago. I think we can definitely go back and talk about that. I would love to, because, uh, you know, you had one of the most famous breathing teachers of ever, probably the most Very famous. Yeah, I really, I, I, you remember I told you when I was in Chicago, um, I called him up and I said, please, I'd like to come for a lesson. He was like, oh, he'd love to, but, but he's, he's just a bit busy this time. I, I, but he, I can come next time I'm here. And then he died. Arnold Jacobs, we're talking about. And I, I, I've regretted that forever, um, that I never met I was, him. I was very fortunate that yeah. I could have a Saturday morning lesson. And this is before I was with the or in the orchestra. And then after I got in the orchestra, I would still be taking lessons on Saturday morning. And he would say, yes, my dear, but I will be watching and don't use this tonight. Well, okay. <laughs> Did he sit right behind you? Right back. Yeah. Right when here. I, when I was playing assistant to, to Dale Clevenger, especially, he sat on my left shoulder and Eddie Kleinhammer was on my right shoulder. And did he sort of tap you on the shoulder in rehearsals and say, you know, sit up straight or blow properly or? You just knew what to do because you knew he was watching. <laughs> One of the best lessons I ever had about watching him was there was this tiny little window in that back door before they renovated the orchestra hall or symphony center, they call it now. But uh, I, I could, I was just tall enough that I could see through and watch him breathe. And if you closed your eyes, you didn't know when he took a breath. Really? You would watch because he had the right kind of resonance and he would release his air going forward and you would, he just didn't hear the end of the note. It's like, how? But that's how he, how he did it. He only had one lung. Arnold Jacobs only had one lung. Is that true? Yeah, he had emphysema and he didn't have very much. My very first lesson with him, we were going through the whole thing take the biggest breath possible and exhale through this hole, you know? So I was going into this machine. He says, no, my dear, you're doing this all wrong. No, no, you have to take in as much air. I said, I'm not sucking any more air and blow it through this machine. No, 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 my dear, you're doing this all wrong. Do it again. <laughs> and after three or four times, he finally said, well, that's okay. Well, you know, you don't have quite three liters of e air. Either do I, <laughs> I'm like the tuba. Well, it doesn't make any difference how much you have is what you do with it. So that's important for everybody of all sizes to remember that. Have you had your lungs measured? Do you know how much air you can get in there? Yeah, when I was younger, I, I could get 2.8. You're kidding. That's, no. that's like teeny that's weeny. When, that's when I was 22. Wow. Well, so you know, it's, and he said, oh dear, that you, you got to really take care of this because that's the most you're ever going to have. I said, oh, thanks a lot. Because <laughs> I, we, we when I was rude. expecting my children, I wanted to go in and get measured. And he wouldn't do it. Why? He said, you don't want to know what you don't have. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah but it's very it. true. It's how you use it. We were measured and I think um, it was quite a long time ago, so I'm sure mine's different now, but it, I had 3.4 and Stefan just laughed at me because he had 5.5 or something, you know, Mary Louisa also had had a lot. And um, and I, I the, the one time I had... Hey, no, no, no. <laughs> I love it when people bring their pets. Where is he? Can we see him? He's in the attic with me. Here, come here. Come, come here. here. Follow. Where come is... here. Hey. Oh, a communal. Oh, oh great. We got to get, we'll get him in for the selfie later. Okay. We'll try. He's probably barking because he hears all the neighbors playing outside. Is that possible? Well, I don't know. He barks because he hears a certain truck and he goes nuts. Oh, okay. But oh, your neighbors are going outside to play right now. Yeah, I don't have any people that are musicians right next to me. Oh, so. Okay, okay, that's probably Maybe good children are. <laughs> um, where were we? Oh, yeah, uh, liters of air. Um, and and so I just got very clever at breathing when no one else did. But, but being a sort of second second horn, I sort of, you sort of, you can sneak around. But being a first horn, you know, you, you, when you got to breathe, you got to breathe and everybody hears it, right? Well, you know, that's that's true however uh both herseth and jacobs i would play something and they would say is that how you really want it to go well oh, i really cool. want the they said well then rephrase it and make that breath you know wow. so they they were very important people and saying no you have to make it for you yeah you so what was your around, you can get around some phrases what what was your trick do you do you always know when you're about to be empty and do you have a reserve in there or or were you very good at taking fast well i say were you are very good at taking fast breaths or what was the secret of someone that has hasn't got a big lung capacity well a little bit of all of that i think i think you have to practice and uh, mr jacobs had some definite ideas of exercises how to do that and one of them i can i'll show you with my you breathe you inhale and you conduct yourself and you inhale over the last quarter and you take that full breath right and then you change it to eighth notes and you breathe over the last eighth note that way and then triplets and sixteenths can we do that together? Sure. Everybody, everybody, you ready for this? No horns up, just air, okay? Right, ready. Breathe. Oh, breathe on the four, right, okay. Yeah, breathe on the four. Now this is eight. Oh, this is. And the idea is to have a very uh, round, you know, and suction. He always talked about the suction of the air going. What about this? Right, right. That was Charlie. I remember Charlie saying, suck dark air. So, yeah, okay. that's, that was Mr. Jacobs. That was Mr. Okay. Jacobs. Yeah. That was Mr. Jacob. I found that very useful. Um, I almost passed out when, as I, I, I then, uh, Charlie explained the everything to me. I remember the first time going to Charlie, Charlie Vernon's uh, lesson, and he said, "Okay, now take the deepest, biggest breath you can." So I, he said, "Did you breathe yet?" And I was like bursting full of breath. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. so then, then he showed me this sucking, sucking against your fingers, or. Because it, it dark it darkens down everything here. So that was a, that was a Jake uh, Arnold Jacobs. Yeah. Okay. My favorite that, story about Charlie Vernon. I don't know if he remembers this, but he was in the orchestra, uh, and Jake was on my left. And he uh, Jacobs was always like putting his hand on your stomach, even though today you wouldn't be able to do that. And he would say, "No, don't hold," and he would just push on your belly. You know, and that's. That's listen. There's a, a question just come in about that. Oh, but, sorry, is this story not it? Not not. Is no, that not the end of the, oh, well, okay. it, Charlie was playing, and all of a sudden there was like, ah, <laughs> kind of sound, and I just turned around to Jake and went, "Yeah, that's good." <laughs> and I knew what he was because he had did it, he had done it to me many times. 
<laughs> and this a question just came in from DK Kim. I don't know where you are. Let us know where you are. This is a question about breathing. What do you think when some people teach to put in the stomach or stick out the belly or let it go? Stick in the stomach or out the stomach? I mean, if you're feeling it when you breathe, I was told that at a very young age that to when I breathe into to stick my stomach out and I couldn't do it. I, I expand. I've learned to expand in every corner I can not to stick my stomach out. What is that theory? Well, I've not, I've never really figured that one out. My, my theory is they're trying to explain that your stomach will and everything else like the viscera does go out mainly because the lungs are getting filled mm. and there's no hole there for the air to go down in your stomach. So mm. it has to just expand. And that I think that the big thing is to realize it's all the way around. It's not just in one direction. I sat behind Mary Louisa once and I watched her breathe and it's like it goes right up into her back. Yeah. You know, she's, she's got a great, you know, set up and it just went and I was so impressed at seeing that. It's like it's a, it's it's it go, it, a good breath should go everywhere, shouldn't it? it? Shouldn't just be held in one place. Yes. When I first started studying with Mr. Jacobs, I was in Lyric Opera. And he kept saying, you know, breathe all the way to your collarbones. I'm like, breathe all the way. Okay. I'll try to breathe all the way to my collarbone. I said, well, that's where your lungs are connected. I said, okay. And I was sitting there in the opera pit watching, you know, someone up there sing. And way I went, oh, that's what they need. Because you could see that this just went, poof. Yeah, we just expanded. Everything expanded. Hang on. You because can see my collarbones right now. <sighs> like that? Yeah, you you breathe. You can you can feel your lungs expand underneath your clavicles. That's right, but you don't want your shoulders go up. No, so you, it's basically it's like right. Yeah, right. yeah. Raising deflate, and then you deflate. That's all it is. That is actually all it is, isn't it? <laughs> but Jake had all these deflating bags, inflating bags. He had all these sort of help accessories, didn't he? Right. Do you, yeah, do I, you I don't use the, the breathing bag anymore because of my dear friend, Sam Falafian. Um, very sadly, he passed away last year. And, but at one point he said, Gail, do you, you're not still using that same bag. I said, well, I kind of there. And he said, man, I, I scraped the inside of it and my student put it underneath the microscope and says, I don't think you want to do that. Ooh. <laughs> So beware if it starts to look a little funky don't, don't breathe into that thing but you Ew. can you you can use a small garbage bag you know yeah. with uh, an elbow joint from a hardware store and make your own and then dispose of it what about these spirometers that they have and all this stuff yeah. this the uh I, they're all at school i don't have yeah. things here i you have can't go I, in no, I have this. What? Well, that's a piece of paper. It's a piece of paper. And okay. if I don't, I'm doing a master class somewhere and I don't have my Insprex to say how easy the air has to go, you know, I'll just take and go, it has to do that. Air has to move. Your, your air just has to move. It's like a, something out there and it has to move it. Yours moved a lot more than mine did. So this is Forte and this is for Pianissimo. And you can do a long tone and you can just watch that piece of paper go. Yeah. And it's that easy air that will produce the resonance and the lack of tension. The minute you put any tension in your body, uh, Jake would take your arm or your leg and he go, you don't want to play like this. <laughs> you want to play like this. And then he'd take a piece of paper and go, Wow. So it has to be simple and easy. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's okay. It has to be simple and easy. So why is it that so many students, I mean, I found when I was doing the breathing exercises, it was fine. Then I'd pick up the French horn and I'd go, you know, you sort of tense up and, and you've got this heavy thing in your hands and you're still trying to you know, lift everything. And then you've got to get all the air you breathe in out of this tiny space. So how can that not make you tense? She asked. <laughs> um, well, one exercise and uh, what I do with one part of my mouthpiece is I turn it around. Ah. 
Now that is a really, that is a fantastic tip. I remember, yep. Okay, can you, if any of you got your mouthpieces, try, take them and try it right now. It's a completely different feeling. It really is. Can you explain it to us? Well, there's no tension. Yeah. And that is the kind of air you want. And I don't have another word. And either did he, he said kind. It's the kind of air. It's not hard. It's the kind of air that flows. So you could take your paper and blow your paper with the, that side of your mouthpiece. Then turn it around and, and buzz and make yeah. that paper move again. But the is minute it, you put an intention into your body, if, if I buzz with tension, right? I, I get that kind of air out of me. And that's a tool. This is a tool. When you when you did that, you, you made a very important point. When people use a lot of tension, yeah, explain that. Well, that's like if you try to go pick up something that's way too heavy for you to ever pick up. Yeah. <laughs> and you can lift up and that's how you yeah. get hurt. Yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> but it's these intercostals that's not yeah. good for horse playing. Not you want good. them to be flexible, you know, and and move with yeah. your wrist not wow. held. Yeah. Gosh, they're coming in they're coming in fast and furious. Um Nelson has asked, do you think the breathing works different for men for women or men because of the abdominal uh, because of the different abdominal anatomy? Well, I think they're very lucky and they probably aren't doing it as easily as they could because they have more to waste. And that's, the guys, very, yeah. that's a very important word. They have yeah. to learn how to waste it. Mr. Tuckwall, yeah. I remember hearing him saying on a master class many years ago at one of the horn workshops that you have to breathe for the last note of the phrase. So if you have a huge air capacity, you know, you have to know what that is. And that's through practicing to know yeah. what you have to play for the yeah. end. Yeah. Wow. Waste the air. That's, I think a lot of people are, are at least in students, in master classes I've taught, students are always afraid they're not going to have enough air. And they're always amazed if I say, okay, play that note and then put, let's put a fermata on that, how long they can actually go. There's always something left in there, isn't there? Yes. And it was interesting one time I was <clears throat> observing and I love to observe other people's master classes. Why that's why I've been dipping into your, your hangouts because I get some new tips all the time. And that's Aww. how you continue to learn. You know, you have yeah. to get some more tools in your own tool I agree. Belt. That's why yeah. I do the horn hangouts to pick everybody else's brains. <laughs> but it's it, I remember Barbara Butler saying, Here, ex exhale all your air. And so she you know, she exhaled all of her air and then she picked up her trumpet and then played a whole phrase. <laughs> <laughs> so there might be some in reserve. You asked a question about knowing how much. M Mr. Jacobs and my old uh, excerpt books, before you could get downline parts, and an excerpt book. And there are many of them that he had, drew, you know, he, there. That's my air capacity. Don't use this bottom third. Just don't yeah. use it. That's your reserve, and you hope you don't have to go there. Because it's but what happens? Sound. What happens if it's like you or me with a sw smaller bodies and smaller lung capacities? Don't we have to use like ninety nine percent, whereas the guys who have seven liters of air don't have to do that? I think we learn how to do it where we don't use tension, because the minute you go too far and you're in in just squeezing out that tension, then you can't take a relaxed breath back in. It's mm. tense. Mm. So it's learning how to do it efficiently. How do you teach that? Um, using uh, some breathing tools that are at school and constant. That's why I don't know how I'm going to teach online yeah. because mm -hmm. I, I listen for you can hear if they're in tension with the kind of air they're taking in. Yeah. You, and, you mean that that's so true this <gasps> or this. <gasps> oh, oh. Yeah, exactly. And it, the lack of sound or the ease of taking in air uh, mm -hmm. is terribly, terribly important of what kind of sound you're going to have. Yeah. 
Yeah, you have to read all the all the all the messages afterwards. I can't get to all of them. There's a lot going on on Facebook as well. Some fantastic memories of of Arnold Jacobs and 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 I mean, really fantastic fantastic comments going on here. I'm seeing the the questions mainly on from the website here on my iPad. It's very hard to sort of keep it all going. So if you have something really juicy, get over to the website and write it here in the chat, um, and then I'll see it e more easily. Um, but you have to read it afterwards. There's so much going on. It's really fantastic things. Jen is watching. Julie's watching. Hi, girls. <laughs> um, Julie, uh, Jen uh, asks, how would you recommend catching yourself and fixing the tension when you noticed it while you're in the middle of playing? So not practicing it, but like in a performance where you're playing away and you suddenly think, oh, oh I'm that's a really good question. Well, I've been very fortunate that I have a very good friend who teaches Alexander technique. Oh. And I, the, the minute I found out that I was asked to do the Kontrastruck, and this is many years ago, uh, I decided I was gonna do it right. And John Hennis, who I've seen for many years, lived a few blocks away from me. So every week I took an Alexander technique lesson and he helped more than anyone could ever say. So he helped my tennis game. <laughs> <laughs> we would have an uh, Alexander lesson and his ch child is the same age as mine. And he'd say, hey, do you wanna go play tennis? And then he'd say, man, are you hitting the ball? I said, yeah, that's so easy, you know? <laughs> so a lot of that same, um, well, a lot of a lot of people know that I really wanted to be a phys ed teacher. I did not want to be in music because my mom was in music. Nope. So I've I've had this love of sports all my life, and and I want to be an athlete. And and I think you have to use some of the ideas of the tension free uh, athleticism. If you watch uh, one of my favorite, Roger Federer, you know the backswing. The the best in the business and is there tension no there's power and that's not the same yeah. Yeah. a lack of tension is probably more power but that's trained that's really trained and horn players can train themselves to play without tension but there are those moments and i have to second gen on this where you're playing away and you don't feel comfortable and are there, do you have any quick fixes for that what can we how can we suddenly let go do you think that would be alexander technique in the moment um possibly checking my my posture but i also exhale before i take an inhale mm -hmm. and that has helped actually more uh in my last years because i didn't think about that as much but when i'm sitting there before you have to play check five there's a few bars you have to sit there and wait <laughs> and, and i ask students and what are you doing what are you doing during those I said, no, why don't you exhale? So if you're constantly exhaling in the rhythm of the orchestra and then inhale and exhale, I exhale three huge exhales and take a big inhale and then I go, but in time with the music. That helps me more with tension than anything else I've found. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, exhaling, fantastic. Luis Garcia is watching from Brazil. Have you met, you know Luis, don't you? You've met Luis? Oh, oh Lewis is really great. Hi, Lewis. Lewis says, um, I've heard you very briefly talk about how Jacobs helped you to prepare for some specific high repertoire. What was it and what was the exercise? How could Jake, how could Jake help you with high notes? He was a tuba player. <laughs> um, I'm not going to demonstrate because I haven't worked <laughs> up that range today, uh, but he would I was, I came in to him and says, yeah, what do you want today? Kind of thing. And I said, well, there's this high note in the Contrastruck I got to play. He said, well, play it. I said, play it. So that's what he, that's what he, that was the exercise. I started on a high E and went down to D and it, you fail miserably. It's okay. You're training your lip where that note is. So you can start with a G on the top of the staff, no tongue, just blow and buzz. And then you go to the F and then you work your way down from G, F, G, E, G, D, G, C, down to G and then G, G, A, G, B, G, all the way up. And you're just tossing your air and you're not, and if you don't make it, that's okay. It's, it's okay. You're, you're mm -hmm. going to have plenty of time. He would, if I did that on a high E, he said, okay, you do that once a week, not once a day. Once a week. 
That's once a, once once a week. Once a week. You could do Why? it with other, other. He said that's like lifting really really heavy weight. Okay. High intensity. So you could do it with a lower note to get the idea of transferring, but not up to that high E. No. Wow. So I flipped him around. I said, okay, so if someone's trying to uh, improve their articulation and entrance on a low note, can you flip it around? He said, oh, absolutely. And that's when he demonstrated to me of starting on a very low note and working up the scale and then back down again. I think someone just sent you a text. I, I know. And I'm like, I thought I turned that all off. <laughs> It's okay. It's live. It's absolutely fine. It's, it's and if it's if it's someone if it's some someone uh, someone nice, you can read the text aloud. I mean, it's fine with me. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Ryan Taylor, Ryan Taylor said you talked about how Jake and Herseth about how they approached breathing and air usage. Can you describe the sounds you were hearing on stage and what they were doing to create those sounds? That's a really interesting question because. I remember playing the first time with the Chicago Symphony. I spent a month playing with them um, at Ravinia one summer when Baron Boyne was chief conductor in the, the opera and also in Chicago. And he said, OK, come and play for a month. And I'll never forget the You can hear them breathing. It's like my hair was being sucked into the into the right. brass section. Right. Tell, so, tell, it, you, you can explain you, it better. Well, I just remember the very first time I ever played extra as, when I was still a student at Northwestern. And, you know, I'd been taking some lessons with Jacobs and, and trying to figure this out. I wasn't studying with Mr. Clevenger yet. I was studying with Mr. Brauk, the second horn player. It's so sweet that you call them all Mr. Mr. Clevenger, Mr. Brown, and Mr. That's very sweet. Mr. Uh, Mr. Jacobs. You, 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 you get sucked right in with them. Literally sucked, really. Oh, yeah. yeah. And everybody's doing that around you. So you just, you're there. Yeah. And isn't that a great way of learning? It is. Yeah. It's it's um, the best lesson. Yeah. I, I will never forget that moment. I, I you feel like you're it, it was incredible. Just the sound and then the noise that came out. It's not only the taking of what comes out of it when they've taken those amazing breaths. It, the, um, did you notice that when you were sitting there that there wasn't any kind of like you go up and then you go? No, mm -hmm. it was like you take it in and bam, you went. Yeah. There was never anybody holding. Yeah. Just go. <laughs> I just remembering Charlie and Jean and the the comments that would go on at the same time as well. It was also also quite impressive. Usually about what was that smell? Was it you today? No, it wasn't. Anyway, let's uh, cut that out of the. <laughs> you know what I mean? You probably oh, heard yeah. those. <laughs> <clears throat> Swiftly along. Um, a good question from Lucas. <laughs> those two were hilarious. Like the two guys from the Muppet Show, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> um, Lucas, uh, how is how is how does the airflow in the high register? Blah, 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 how does your airflow in the high register differ from the low register? Well, I I'm not a mathematician, mm -hmm. but I, I use math a lot in that and using uh, thinking of air speeds. So in the horn, you have these harmonic series that you have to play on. And so if you're playing a low C, that's number two in the har harmonic series, correct? And if you're gonna play third space C, that's a number eight. And so I tell my, my very, very brilliant uh, Northwestern students, let me see, two plus two is, and they look at me like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and four and four, oh, eight. So I said, that's the difference between the low C and the third space C. That's the difference in your airspeed. And if you think about airspeed, airspeed you, things will happen along with it. But if you just go simple, be simple, and let the airspeed take it, you will hit the third space C and et cetera, et cetera. I asked so Jeff, it's, uh, different, uh, it's, it's fast. It's faster yeah. air. It's faster and it's used up quicker as well. But using up a lot of air is good because when your body's empty, it's going to take a lot of air in, you know, Correct. it just, it does it automatically. That's why you do so much sport because, you know, you're, you're, you were training yourself when your body needs it, it takes it. And, you know, Correct. there's no, nowhere better to practice that than running up and down the stairs. Then your body well, will take that. Well, you can also just sit there and say, okay, how do you take an inhale? And this was a, a question that was asked John Hennis in a class one time. He said, how do you take an inhale? And he said, why did you stop exhaling? You'll find out. Oh. So exhale, exhale, exhale until you're really out. And you go, 
oh, that was a pretty good inhale. You don't have to think about taking it. Oh, I got to take this big inhale. You automatically yeah. do it. Yeah. So it's not only about the breathing in, it's about getting it all out again as well. Yeah. yeah. And is there a is there a special trick or is it just experience that 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 makes you realize or, or can help you judge how much air you actually need for something? I guess that's just practice, right? Practice. Yeah. You have to know. Yeah. And wasting the air is the best advice we can give people, I think. <laughs> Gus is watching. Hello, Gus. Hey, Gus. <laughs> I assume Gus Sebring, nice to see you. He did an amazing Alpine horn video. Did you see it? Beautiful. No. Oh, you have to look it up. It's on his Facebook page. Beautiful nature and Gus playing Alpine horn over the uh, over the, the countryside. Beautiful, beautiful. You love the countryside too, Gail. I like your moose posts in the summer. These, these moose posts are, um, <clears throat> last year I was getting ready to get up at uh, to watch the women's final in for Wimbledon, and I, I as you've heard probably, the, uh. I had two German shepherds, and I was on my day bed in my condo in Jackson Hole where I love to sleep because it's like right there is outside, and my two German shepherds just go bonkers at quarter of <laughs> seven, and I'm like flying off. They're going, shut up, be quiet, don't do the holy crap. Where's my camera? You know because. <laughs> About six feet away, there was a huge bull moose. <laughs> Gosh. And, and, they were, and he was sitting there, he didn't bother. The dogs are going crazy. And he walks like literally that far away from my window. That's an amazing photo. You posted that on your Facebook page, didn't you? Amazing photos. Like it's like out of a book. <laughs> Incredible. So sad about Wimbledon. Oh my goodness. Oh, it makes me sad. Uh, oh my I'm not watching the Cubs. I have I tickets. Know. I can't go to the Cubs. Oh. <laughs> The world is the world is going crazy. Um, yeah. Kim Minson, she remembered when you came to play a concerto at New World, maybe 99, and you were very sick. No one would have ever known it from your playing. There was no evidence that you were feeling bad or had trouble breathing. That's the secret. Was this mental preparation or physical? Do you remember that? Oh, I, I guess I was playing the Nussen concerto with Ali. Oh, oh, yeah. And I got down there and man, I could feel, when I get bronchitis, I, it's bad. Mm -hmm. And I could say, oh, this is getting bad. And I went to the desk where I was staying at the hotel and they had a doctor come. Oh, and gosh. he gave me a shot of vitamin B12 right in the you know where, and it wasn't <laughs> the arm. And it was like this miracle. And also the probably the warm salt air helped the most. Yeah. So I was really sick and it, it really turned, it was one of the fastest I've ever felt like something happened. So I'm a very big believer of maybe vitamin B12 is not such a bad thing to have an injection when you're really ill and you have to play. Yeah, it's it's a great vitamin. It really is. I had a huge deficiency of it recently, um, a few months ago. I'm a vegetarian, so that was also, you know, you don't get all that you need. And I was prescribed a course of vitamin B12 injections. I tell you, it's fantastic for your playing. I don't know why, but I, or maybe I just felt a lot better. But uh, big, big fan of that vitamin. Um, but p mentally, you have to. Sometimes when I'm really sick, I play better because I don't worry so much. You just think, bah. Oh, <laughs> you know you just what think, I mean? No, you just think about air constant yeah. because it's so a little bit more difficult to not cough and you're really trying but to if bring you, it. If, really if you have bronchitis and you're doing your sort of breathing, that's, a, that's actually quite a disaster because it really goes really deep. Yeah. And so I think you know, you're focusing on the right thing is the, the air, the, mm -hmm. you know, you want to play musically and you have the air and that's that again, there's the Mr. Jacobs. Kylie White is on the chat. Is she a student of yours? Yes, she's a first year she's, grad. She's Kylie, you're great. Kylie keeps commenting on all the things um, of all the tips that you give. So the last one, she says um, that you, um, you, you, you do ooh, ooh, you articulate with ooh, 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 vowel pretty much everywhere in the range. Thank you, Kylie. Keep, keep writing in pearls of Gail Williams's wisdom. Thank you. Well, that's that's, that's another Jacobs, to be honest. Uh, ah, tell he, us. He just would say, uh, just say two. Two. Two, two, two. And two, two, that's two, two, kind of where two, you two. normally articulate. That's where your tongue goes when you articulate. That's the shape that you want to be in. Ooh. Two. And yeah, not very, two. Very, very old uh, Arvin book, 
on the bottom it says commencing of the tone and it said two what about in the low range two 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 we kind of said just say two to oh to a little more toe yeah great but it's great. that same shape but that's sort of the same thing as i said the other day when i texted you about a whistle that's right yeah that's right tell us about the whistle that was during the during the hangout and we all tried to whistle let's try and i want to try and whistle again can you explain that so as you whistle that's a, a david cradle kind of thing see i steal from everybody you know good that's, tell us more uh, it's like uh, Daniel Coyle said in his book, uh, The Little Book of Talent, which is a great book everybody should read. What's uh, it called? Um, Little Book of the, Talent. The Little Book of Talent by Daniel Coyle. De Devin, uh, can you put the link in the chat, please? Thank you. <laughs> the first one he wrote was uh, Talent Code, but this is The Little Book of Talent. And he's, Picasso said, don't, don't borrow, steal. So I steal. <laughs> but uh, Cravel talks about whistling, and so where is your tongue when you whistle? Most of the time, the tip is down, and when you go higher, it goes this way, but the tip stays out of the way, so the air can go faster yeah. to the lip. What about the people who can't whistle? And they can air whistle <laughs> and not make a sound. They just haven't practiced enough. I have a five-year-old grandson can whistle like mad. All right, all right. I was talking about myself, actually. <laughs> I'll have to practice it. <laughs> yeah, but you, yeah, you've taken up something. You shouldn't is um, go, shh, shh, shh. that whistle. Yeah, that's, that's, no. that's not the same. No, that's Or this one? <laughs> I can oh, whistle like that. Don't use your fingers. <laughs> okay. Wash your hands if you're going to do that that's these days. Right. Wash wash your hands um uh gail you've taken up the harmonica does that help your horn playing <laughs> no i haven't figured out how to do this yet but i i've, I've gotten the octaves that's about it <laughs> um, I great. Oh, <laughs> um oh dear um f horn patrick says he's just lost his season tickets to the blue jays yeah you can't see the cubs no blue jays oh my goodness Hadley, heard you, heard you play Strauss one in Lexington, Massachusetts. You were also sick, but you sounded amazing. All these charming people out there. Oh my goodness. And, um, and, and uh, is that the book? Because Erin Amendola said, when I took a lesson with Gail Williams, she gave me a great drill. It was a flexibility drill that we would flutter tongue. I bought the blue book from her that has these exercises, but a student has stolen it. Can you remember the name of the book? Do you remember that book? A blue book with a... Some exercises may have been for violin. No, no. I don't remember at this point. This, but is you need... that, this is a book that I have a lot of people buy. Ah, the breathing book. You know what? I'm going to add that. We're making a little list of etudes and interesting things. In fact, that was, that was the piece of paper I was trying to blow on. And I'm going to add that one. The breathing book by... Um, uh, uh, Devin, can you put that in the chat? The breathing book by yeah. David... I haven't read that one. Nesmith. Okay. Nesmith. Prefaced by Eric Rowski, who's coming to our party tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> and why is that book? It's a very good book. Okay. About Alexander Technique. Okay, fantastic. I'm so going to get that book. Someone's asked about the, um, the, the breathing gym. Yes. I mean, that's one, one uh, CD that I have in my CD player that still actually works yes. in, my, in my office. And yeah. I use it a great deal. Or if I really just need a a good laugh, I put it on the later tracks to listen to those guys play so fast I can't imagine my fingers going that fast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that that's quite that's quite a hardcore there breathing gym, isn't it? I think my my ribs would probably crack with half of those things. Um, Gail, Andre Lipkin wants to know what's your favorite concerto to play, and which is your favorite orchestral excerpt? <laughs> it's like which is your favorite color? That's a hard one. You know, I was really lucky to play Strauss two with, with Schulte and the CSO, but I have to say Strauss one, it's probably my favorite. It's so youthful. It's just so, uh, such honest music. And that's, aren't we lucky? We horn players are so lucky. We not only have one, we have two Strauss. We have four and a little bit more of Mozart. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really sorry, trumpet players and trombone players. I am very sorry. Well, we got there's, it, so it's fine. <laughs> there are so many great ones out there, and we're so fortunate to have the variety of music of 
young and old and new and, and you know, things you keep finding. It's, we have a plethora of music. Excerpts, yeah. oh boy. Um, Are the ones you I hated, ones you didn't look forward to? I can't say that I that I have a, a favorite excerpt. I I know that anytime I could ever play. Uh, oh, jo Joe Alessi. Joe Alessi just joined. Hello, Joe. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Uh, anytime I could play a, a Mozart con uh, concerto or symphony. Yeah. That was heaven. Yeah, and any ones you didn't like? No, obviously um, not. No, not really. Not really. I, it was always a challenge. I, you know, I got to play more of the contemporary literature in the CSO. Was Dale Gail, was, yeah. It really is. I mean, just to imagine this tiny little girl on the first chair there with these huge brass legends all around you. I mean, I know you've been asked this many, many times, but was it was it tough for you to survive there or did you just get out there and do your thing? I mean, you had the support of everybody there. I know how much they loved and and respected you and, and still do. I mean, you had Jake on your side all the time, but it, it was it was it tough at any point? Um, sure. Getting the job was tough. Yeah, More than it was to keep, to keep it. Apollo, knock it off. <laughs> um, you know, I had the support of not only the, the brass players, um, and, and always getting ideas because I would ask, but, um, not only a lot of people knew that I wanted to be in phys ed, but a lot of people didn't know that I grew up on a farm and my dad never said it wasn't right for me not to go down to the barn and work. So I didn't know, you know, when I got to college, I thought it was just, I didn't know if there was more women or men because I, I didn't know. Mm. I knew that I couldn't be a vet because my, I was just too small. I got kicked around in the barn too much to be you know, a large <laughs> animal vet. So I, that's part of what was my other dream. But so I knew I couldn't do that. But I was never told that you couldn't do something by my dad and my mom, who was a music teacher. Mm. And so you just did it. And I lived in a very small town where everybody had to do everything. So you did sports and you did music. When my mother's, uh, when there was a soccer game, we didn't have football where I grew up, we had soccer. And when my mother, when we were having chorus and the boys left for the soccer game, they turned into a girl's chorus because they were all there. Mm. So everybody, it was, I was fortunate to live in a time where you had to, do everything yeah yeah but playing I playing in the orchestra was not that i had a great deal of support a lot easier than being kicked around the barn by the animals mm -hmm. actually there are probably a lot of similarities <laughs> uh, that, probably so <laughs> Gail, it's it's ten. You you've got to go out. It's 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 ten ten to eleven my time, and you've got to go out, get out there, and and play your horn for the neighbors. Uh, that apparently is that something everybody's doing in Chicago I today. I hope so I hope some people are out making noise. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. There are so many questions here. Um, if you feel like it, you can have a look at the chat later, and you're welcome to answer any ones that you want. Say hi to Gail. Send us your send us messages, whatever on Facebook. We'll see them here. We'll see them here on the chat I, um, I have one story please I, I have told you before i would this is a story that uh todd barmaster who's a third horn player in st louis symphony uses this and i think this is really important he said when he first joined uh st louis that uh, airline was being cre new created you know and it was the um the it's called efficiency so who's the more important is the, there's two pilots. What's more important? You know what the two pilots might be? Buzz. Well, bu buzz and, and blow air. and yeah. air, buzz and air. Yeah. Oh, but there's a hijacker on the plane. <laughs> okay. The tongue. <laughs> Get it down. <laughs> So as is teaching young kids, that's a really fun little story to tell them that 
That's know? really nice. So the hijacker. So okay, so the, the 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 hijacker gets in the way of the good work that the pilots are doing, right? The but the tongue. How can we stop it from doing that? Apart from buckling him down in his seat. Actually, that's that's it. <laughs> keeping it keeping it down. Keeping it down. Whistle mm. or sing. If you yeah. sing, where's your tongue? Yeah. It's not flapping up and around. No. Oh, so sometimes you see you see if a soprano hits a really high note, you see it all sort of. Of course, but not the very tip. The tip is yeah. down. Like that's your, right. On your, on your video, your the tip is down, the back comes up, and it makes the air go faster. Yeah, that was really quite amazing to see. It was quite gross, actually. But <laughs> <laughs> to see how big, it was really like, whoa, that's me? Because the tongue is not just this. It like goes all the way back here. Muscle. Yeah, it's a very mm -hmm. strong muscle. Yeah. yeah, but that really was very interesting to see. I think they've come, a, they've, they've done a lot of improvements with the cameras now. And I think I'm going to try and go back there. Peter Itlis and his, his, his team there, they've done amazing work. Um, and I think they're helping a lot of people with dystonia now um, to understand what happens. Do that. Did they have an MRI done? Mm -mm. It, it, was, no. it wasn't nice in there. It really wasn't. Oh, no. <laughs> but your tips for breathing, buzzing, breathing, blowing, I mean, it, you make it sound so simple, but actually it is. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. why is it so many people feel like the breathing is such a big deal? Well, uh, I, I, I just feel like there's somewhere along the line, someone's told them it's difficult. And mm. it's, it's, you know, I can, I, I, I do share with my, my grandchildren my horn. If they're over there and I say, you want to play it? And it's amazing to watch what they do. And a three-year-old can pick it up and have this huge sound. Mm. And and you watch them breathe. Oh, it deflates. Oh, it's not being held. Oh, they can buzz. Oh, you know. So <laughs> we have to be childlike and make yeah. it like childlike. And yeah. if you're not having fun, then you're not learning. Yeah, here, here. Well, has to be fun. Yeah. Thank you so much, You're so welcome. much. Really, I mean, I, I want, I want to do hangouts with you every week, but I'll see you tomorrow at the party, right? Yes, we will. We will see Where's you. handsome Tim? Handsome Tim, are you still there? You're going to come back. Handsome Tim has to be in. And oh, there he is. I had my coffee. Hi. I had my coffee. <laughs> you had your coffee. Yeah, look at that face. You've had your coffee. Uh, is do you think we could do a selfie? For everybody, with everyone, it's time for the horn selfie of the day. So, Gail, where are you off to? Can I move? Can I move okay. here? With here, pleasure. <laughs> what have we got today, Tim, for a selfie? Nothing. I've got my horn. That's about it. Yeah, I don't have. Come here, you big booby. Come here. Oh, come here. I don't know. Oh, there he is. Oh, awesome. Hi. Oh, he's so cute. Go on, you got to get him in the shot. Come here, sweetie. Is that Apollo? This is Apollo. Okay. This Hello, is my Apollo. young boy. Okay, Gorgeous. ready? Okay, get his face in there. There he is. Come on, smile, Apollo. Ready? One, two, three. Selfie. Can you do one, Tim, for us too? Ah, uh, yes, I can. <laughs> Click. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Gail. Thank you. You're so inspiring. Go and read what everyone's saying. It's really quite amazing. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you for inviting me in. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll see, see you, you tomorrow. Tomorrow's party time on the Horn Hangouts, 9 p.m. Berlin. That's an hour earlier than today. 3 p.m. New York. That's what time were you? Poor Tim. Oh, gosh. <gasps> <laughs> that's really early for you, isn't it? it? It might just be one where I stay up all night. I mean, we've all had those parties, yeah. <laughs> but it's Julie. Come on, it's for Julie. It's for we've Julie. For Julie, it. I'll be up. I'll definitely for be up. For Julie, it's got to be. And we've got to get, we've got to remember to call Tim Jones. Because if he's got to show up this time. He better. He, knows he, he, showed, he, he showed up in the middle of Radovan's hangout, so I'm, I'm sure he, 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 he showed up sideways and we were like, uh-oh. <laughs> Just as Radovan was talking about the, the earthquake in Zagreb and then Tim jo joins in sideways. That was quite impressive. <laughs> okay, so tomorrow party time. We'll see all of you back here tomorrow night and uh, or tomorrow afternoon or whatever, tomorrow morning in Australia. Everyone's yeah, yeah. got to get up. And um, Gail, thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Enjoy, everybody. Have a great day. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Thanks for Thanks joining everyone. us.